So I'm going to call the meeting to order at 7.02 p.m. And I'm going to start with reading the script for remotely conducted meetings. And I, part of me wants to say if anyone would like to join in, everyone probably knows this by heart by this time, <laughs> feel free. So, all right. So as a preliminary matter, this is the Grafton Public Library Board of Trustees meeting. And permit me to confirm that all members in persons anticipated are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Marty Esner. Affirmative. All right, Aaron. Here. Doug. Uh, yes. All right, John. I'm here. And Dana has not rejoined us yet. All right, and staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Beth, Gath Beth? Here. Sorry. <laughs> and Debbie Jackson. We didn't hear you, Debbie. Try again. You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. So something's wrong with your microphone. All right. Well. I all think right. the record can show that we read her lips and she said, I think, yeah, all right. I think I'll everyone see her. sees her waving to us. So all right. she'll work on all that. Right. Thank, Debbie. Thank you. All right. And so good evening. This open meeting of the Grafton Library Board of Trustees is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted on the town's website, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely as long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. For this meeting, the Grafton Public Library Board of Trustees is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website as unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda. We are now turning to our first item on the agenda, but before we do, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. And further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and, and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Okay, so the first item on our agenda for this evening is approving the minutes from February 22nd of this year, and we'll do these two separately. Aaron? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from, uh, let's go with January. No, sorry, this is February 22nd, 2022, but I believe it's 2023. Is that correct? Uh, yes. On the minutes itself, I just really, yeah, on the minutes itself, it says 23. 
Okay, so I, I make a motion to approve the uh, February 22nd, 2023 minutes. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, any further discussion or questions? All right, hearing none, I'll go through the list. Uh, Karen, I. Marty? I. Aaron? Aaron, I. Doug? Doug, I. John? John, I. And Dana? I. All right, I declare the motion carried. The next item up for a vote is the amended minutes from January 25th, 2023. And Debbie, <coughs> sorry, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe the only update to this was, I'm just going through here, a mention that initially the um, incorrect Zoom link, the prior one had been posted on the agenda. We got that straightened out and you had posted it um, in Facebook and everyone was eventually able to get in by about 7.30, I believe. Oh, so, and Debbie's still, yeah. If you want to just nod yes or no, okay, yes. Yeah, so Karen, j just a point of order. I think the discussion okay. should just go after the motion is made and then we can discuss um, minutes. All right, okay. I thought Thank it was you the for other the way around. Um, but I will make another motion if you allow me to. <laughs> you know what? It keeps the meeting moving. Yeah. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the amended minutes from January 25th, uh, 2023. All right. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion or questions? Beth. Thanks. So the amendment is that we failed to include the public input or public comment that we had had the incorrect Zoom link. So that's what we're amending. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, seeing no further discussion, uh, for a, we're voting for approval. Uh, Karen, I. Marty? I. Aaron? Aaron, I. Doug? Doug, I. John? John, I. Dana? I. All right. Declare the motion carried there. Next, we have the approval of bills for fiscal year 23, warrants 35, 36, 37, and 38. And these had all been sent out by Beth during the past month. Do we have a motion? Dana. I make a motion to approve the bills as, as stated. Okay. All right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. And um, any questions or comments? All right. Hearing none. Uh, Karen, I. Marty? I. Aaron? Aaron, I. Doug? I. John? John, I. And Dana. Thank I, sorry. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda, we have the. So I have a quick question. Yep. Um, not particularly about the bill, but um, Beth, can you remind us with the Xerox machines? You These are now on lease. Is that yeah, correct? They are. And so the, the base lease is like $624 a month, but then we also get charged for copies and toner. So it's can be eight to nine hundred dollars a month, which is more okay. than we had planned and budgeted for. Yeah, we had been paying it out of our revolving account, which is where we take in money for printing and faxing, thinking that was a correlation. You know, we charge people for using the machine, and then we put the money back into the machine. But then we shut down for you know pandemic, and so many people have their own computers and devices now. We're not taking in income to go into that revolving account to continue to cover the cost. So we are starting to run low on that account. And for next year's budget, I have requested that um, we may need to pay that lease out of state aid to be uh, I think 9,600 bucks for the year. And how many copiers do we have under lease in the library? We currently have two. And two. I think okay. when the three years are up, I'll limit it to one and buy a printer and that'll be cheaper. Less expensive. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Do you know when the lease is up, Beth? I think we're like 17 or 18 months in, so we're about halfway. We, we oh. started it when we had the new building, so. Okay, yeah. all right, uh, Aaron? Yes, um, so that sounds like a fine plan. Th thank you for um, you know giving some information on that. Um, do you have to lease through like a town uh, vendor that the, the rest of the town uses, or can we select our own vendor? We can select our own vendor, but we get a discount if we're using the same company. Um, and ideally, somebody who is not me, who would be making that deal and doing that procurement, but what kind of happens is the town gets their copiers, and then that company makes calls to us and say, so we've already provided for, you know, municipal center and police department. So there's not like a master list really, but um, we're always choosing um, a vendor who we get a state discount from and then a group discount for the number of machines. So it's the best price available. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you, um, if you want some assistance looking at uh, copier volumes and whatnot, um, it's something that I've done in the past and I'd be happy to look at it for the library. Um, you know, and see if we can reduce the cost there. If you okay. want to continue to have a copier, I think having a copier is a really great am amenity um, if for scanning and whatnot. But um, you know, yeah. they are expensive. Yeah, yeah, and we're, we're we're doing less and less paper. So I I feel like in 2019 when we were starting the plan, we were probably still printing out a four-page summer reading program brochure and making 6,000 copies for every student. And now, like the most of the program is online, and so is the calendar. So. Thank you. Dana? I'm sorry, Beth. I, I, I think I miss, I didn't understand that. Um, may, we, you're saying that, it, I, I'm trying to figure this out. Is right. there, is there one vendor that the town rec has everybody use or you're just saying, you know, that you get a discount if you use the particular vendor, but there's no like, there's no like um, cohesiveness, you know, there's no yeah. specific requirements. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, there, there's not a specific requirement. We're always going through procurement law and making sure we're getting the best deal. And in this okay. case, the best deal is going to the same vendor as the rest of the town and getting a group discount. Okay. And do you think it ever would be worth it to buy a copier in the long run or would that just be crazy? Or is that something Aaron could look into? Somebody could price it out. I think yeah. that uh, where we thought, again, like we thought we'd be making lots and lots of copies, in particular, like children's room calendars and summer reading program schedules and you know, flyers, well, and we're just re reducing, reducing, reducing paper. Well, I was so, just thinking about citizens wanting to come in. Uh, maybe that's gone down. I was just thinking that's one, uh, uh, that's a nice amenity the uh, the library offers, because honestly, I don't know any other place where you can go, not unless you go to like a post off, like um, place like Staples. So that's what I was wondering. Yeah, I, I wouldn't eliminate it. I think it's very valuable. People okay. still do need faxing, and sometimes it's required for certain types of documents. A scan is not acceptable. But okay. I think we don't necessarily need two. But okay. when we to decide to get rid of one, the children's department would need, a, I think, a still a heavy duty printer that we could own that could also okay. copy a scan, but not at the volume that we thought we might need. Okay, that's that sounds good. I just wondered. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, the next item is uh, Beth. We have the fiscal year 23 budget update. Did you want a building program and grant? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I have in front of me. I was anticipating. That's what you have in front of you. Yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so in February, we got a quote to remove a border, part of the border of the green roof that might have been contributing to the ongoing leak that we we're having in of community room, room 103. Um, so that removal took place in March. So technically you know, not part of the February report, but it was done. I think we removed a foot. We did have a, a major snow and rain and wind event and no leaking. So that's great. Uh, we kept the sedum planters that were removed and they're currently under the windows outside of the children's room getting full sun. Um, and we're hoping that in the spring, our garden volunteers can integrate them into our garden beds. Um, I met with Chandler because our ADA door opener stopped working. There's a button that you wave your hand at as you come into the building on a column, and then one on the inside that you wave your hand at and it opens both doors so people can pass to and fro, and for some reason the motion sensor failed and a part needs to be ordered. Um, it's now been several weeks and I'm trying to keep pressure on the construction team to get that replacement part from Chandler because it should only be a few hundred dollars um, and you know, easily swapped uh, and paid for and installed. So I don't, I don't know why it's taking so long to get that part, but we're aware it's an issue. We have some signage up. Anybody who can't 
pull open that heavy door, which is still ADA compliant with the design. Um, we have a doorbell right there. Staff can let people in if they're having any trouble, but uh, it's been out of order for longer than I would certainly like. Um, while they were here, Chandler uh, swapped a crash bar for us. We have the emergency door in the teen room armed. So if you try to go out, it, it does beep very loudly. Um, and we added the same feature to the children's program room door um, trying to help prevent or, or so that we notice if little kids are trying to elope or are unattended and getting in and out of that door. Um, we'd still like to add a crash bar with an alarm to the emergency exit that's in the main children's room. We're still not clear on why some doors have them and some don't and why some were overlooked. Um, no work began in February and as of this date, I think we finished uh, about a week ago. So all counters have been lowered to meet ADA compliance. <laughs> Doug is clapping. Um, and all sinks have been lowered. So Friends Corner is ready for vending. Carrie, whenever you guys wanna work that out, they also gave a little extra space. Um, in one instance, in the teen librarian's office, we lost some storage space because they cut down uh, where the, the shelving was and cut out the drawer. And the millwork team actually repurposed all of the drawers so that we didn't lose storage and built them into a separate housing, which was really appreciated. Um, they managed to match the laminate and the granite and the, the maple all really well. Um, we've had some noise and scheduling, had some noise and scheduling complaints due to the construction issue. And it was challenging, but we just tried to be very flexible with which space the vendor contractor was gonna be in. And the work has been completed. Um, Tucker Library Interiors came, I think, midway through the month to install some extra shelving that we ordered for the children's room that Capital Campaign very graciously agreed to pay for. Um, so we're still trying to sort out which of the old shelving we can repurpose um, and what we can't. Um, and it certainly expanded our ability to put away and house all of the materials in the space. We are just about resolved, I think, for our HVAC issue, uh, Veterans LG and Advantage, which is hardware, software, and online system management. We're all here to deal with the heating and cooling system over the month of February, and we were still seeing very low temperatures in my office, which is kind of the administrative wing, the one next door to mine, um, the historical storage room, sometimes 219. Um, and it turns out there was another part that needed to be replaced. They to be replaced. They're all on site again this week. And now all of a sudden, my office is like 69 or 70 degrees when I come in in the morning instead of 62. So I'm still waiting for official word that it's been resolved um, and that they're ready to sign off and then retrain. Um, and I'm anticipating that by the end of this month, which is um, a huge step in finishing our LEED certification sending out our final pay app um, and declaring our project complete. That's really, uh, we're still waiting for a little um, ball bearing wheel for the gate at the bottom of the stairs. There's some confusion over what the architect intended for the design. Um, so somebody was gonna come and take a look at it last week and see what they could put together. Uh, the door does work, it closes, it opens, it locks, it has the right panels. So this is just more of a, um, if we're using it a lot, we want to make sure that it has um, equal weight so that the hinges can continue to support the door. Um, what else? We got a humidifier for the local history storage room delivered. And now William is looking over the plans to put together a request. I forget what it's called, if it's an RFI or an RFP, but we need to find a contract, probably need to go out to bed to find a contractor to install it for us. It's been removed from the contract for the construction project um, so that we can outsource it to somebody else. So that's in process. Um, Sunshine Sign was on site at the beginning of February. They installed some donor signage and corrections to our donor wall. Um, we are still waiting for presentation area and makerspace folding doors. They're going to be um, aluminum storefront type doors that will match the main entry at the parking lot. Um, and they'll like fold to close off the makerspace and to close off the presentation area adjacent to the community room between that and the kitchen. Um, and we're, we think that everything is shipping next week and should be on site the first or second week of April. So we're hoping that will be wrapped up by the end of the month. Um, I got caught up with some reporting to MBLC, which they're very happy about. 
Um, and William Blake, the town, assistant town administrator, and I are working on that final financial report. So there's like two things we need to get our next payment. We really need our permanent certificate of occupancy, which we'll get because we create, uh, finish the ADA counter work. So the architect needs to send a letter to the building inspector to say that it's done. Uh, and then they need to come probably take a look. <laughs> and then he can issue a final certificate. And that's our next benchmark to get a next grant payment before the end of June from Mass Board of Library Commissioners for the Mass Public Library Construction Program grant. Um, and then once we finish a final financial report and final narrative report, then we're eligible to apply next fiscal year for the rest of our money. Um, and we think that the lead certification report might not be in, in time to ask for that money next year. It's an extra $165,000 if we make the silver lead, lead certification. So that might be pushed off another year too. But we're, uh, real progress has been made and we really seem to be near the end. I'm happy to take any questions. I think our next building committee meeting is going to be um, Monday, April 3rd, six o'clock on Zoom. Two hands, Karen, you can call on people, three hands. Karen, you muted. She's pointing. <laughs> oh, is she pointing at me? Uh, I couldn't Yes, tell. actually, I am pointing at you. <laughs> you're, you're actually pointing at like John or somebody else. Um, no, so uh, I'm just wondering how much more of the grant are we, um, have, have we yet to receive? Do you know offhand? Yeah, so it's two payments, um, probably between 1.6 and 1.8, give or take. Because it was supposed to be five equal payments, but then we got an early $460,000. So they, they try and break it up into um, four, uh, five equal payments over five years. Okay, thank you. And that money, what happens is that money goes right into the town savings account that they're supposed to have that generates interest. And then Mary Loria, the town accountant, turns around and writes a check um, to pay off the borrowing that we did for the debt exclusion. So it goes right to the bank right away. Great, thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right, I think going down to round two, we have Doug. Yeah, Beth, when, that's great with the roof. Do we have... Uh, timelines on when those ceiling tiles are going to be replaced so that the community room is kind of back in order? No, I guess we were waiting to make sure it didn't leak again. And I feel like we did that with that storm. Was it last was it last Tuesday? Everything's a blur. Um, so I guess, yeah, I can find out whose task it is to put those back or replace them from attic stock if they are stained. Sometimes we can just flip them, but if the damage is on both sides, yeah, we need great. to replace them. I'll find Thanks. out. All right, and who was number three? Uh, Carrie. Sorry, I was looking up on the screen. Um, so yeah, so thank you. That's um, we noticed that the um, the friends area um, uh, counter was reduced and the space is wider. So that's wonderful. So we will. Um, we actually had our friends board meeting last night, and we did talk about. Um, revisiting the vendor that we had identified previously um, for the vending machine. So um, hopefully that is still an available option because it seemed like a very good option. Um, there, it, it, so the counter is lower, the space is wider, fantastic. Um, there's some finishing work that is not complete, like the, the wood is not painted. So it's definitely not kind of complete from a visual point of view. Do you have any idea when that might happen? Yeah, I, so I walked through with uh, Ron, the architect, the Mike, the mill worker, and William Blake, we noted some touch-up painting, not on wood, but on walls, like plastered painted walls. Um, I just took so, a picture. There's definitely yeah. like a piece of wood that was completely different kind of on the left-hand side. Oh, next time I'm there, I'll, okay. I'll take a picture, but it's it definitely right. does not look finished. Okay, send it to me because we looked at everything and thought everything was okay. There were two things that were outstanding, one in two different rooms and some paint and a list of paint touch-ups. So okay, because so we, we all noticed it like because we went we were in that room before we went upstairs for our meeting and it yeah. yeah okay. Okay. Yeah send it to me and I'll bring it to the next meeting. We'll do thank you. Sure. Uh Dana. I just wanted I know Beth I, I think you you've touched on this but so what I'm trying to figure out is then when did you think the 165 would come in? Because I'm trying to figure out when is like our final date when we'll have all the monies in from the state and also the lead. The lead just said we might be, it might be next year, but I didn't know what year that is. Is that 2024 yeah. or 20? When is that? What year are you? Requiring? Yeah, it's, it's fiscal year. So they should be issuing a check for fiscal year 23, which is the one we're in now that ends June 30th. 
So then a final payment would be by the end of fiscal year 24, which would be June 2024. Okay. Yeah. And then the 165 is after that? It's lead? not it's not so much that it's after that. It's we need to hand in the certificate the lead certificate to MBL. Okay, so we have to do we have to okay, we have to go, yeah. go through more some more um they have to make sure everything is squared away and then we'll, well and not so much that but like they they need all of their paperwork like now or by april so that they can start having their board meetings and then recommending say that they pay grafton uh their okay. grant payment so if we're not able to finish pieces that are required like if, if i don't actually get the certificate of occupancy in a timely manner we won't get any money next year. We'll have to wait because we'll have missed their funding cycle. Okay, that's what I was so, trying to figure out. Okay. Yeah, so I've okay. been keeping pressure on construction team right. um, to finish things up in time, any, but the HVAC, yeah. we need the HVAC signed off okay. on. The commissioning needs okay. to be complete to get the lead certification. Okay, so we'll eventually get it. When, yeah. So it sounds like it might be a year away or so, but just let us know because that's big news. I mean, that's yeah. that's terrific. And it should, it should a silver go, one, right? Yeah, and it should the, go to the project and not like into the town general fund. I'm pretty sure that's a requirement. So, and, like we have things outstanding still. Like, um, no, oh, that's fine. Not, I just mean, yeah. yeah, I just meant as a library that is that's significant. <laughs> I mean, I know yeah. the monies have to go wherever they have to go, but I think that we would like the world at large to know about that. I mean, that's something to be really well, proud of. Yeah, we'll we'll get a plaque. Uh -huh. So it's exciting. Good. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, did I miss anybody? Oh, John. Oh, I saw that go up. Yep. Uh, I just had a question uh, about the the doors for the teen room. Did you say that those were already ordered and coming in, or was it just the the kitchen one? Yeah. No, it's the same design. Um, slightly different sizes. They were ordered at the same time. Um, I think we had talked about because it's like a you know panels of of glass or I think glass, plexiglass in a an aluminum frame. We don't want people to walk into them, so we've got to figure out what kind of um, you know cling or or vinyl or etching we're going to put to stop that. And and I, I'm advising just a line in the teen space and more full sort of privacy type stuff for the presentation. I think uh, that but, piece kind of has been, not been hammered out, but yeah, they're ordered and in, in coming. Right. Okay. Yeah. But the doors yeah. themselves are on. Okay. That's great. Yeah. Both spaces. Finally. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you, everyone. Right. Let's see. Okay. Now, next is the fiscal year 23 budget update. Sure. So I just got from the town. I think mid last week when I was out on vacation, um, November, December, January, and February monthly summary report. So I did um, pull that page from the whole town ledger report and sent them out. I'm sorry, just before the meeting. Um, so I took a look at all the accounts. It's March and near the end of March. So we're getting near the end of our fiscal year. Things are getting a little tight. We're slightly under in utilities, but we are a little bit over in repair and maintenance um, and in office supplies. And we still have about uh, $10,000 or so to spend on our educational materials and book budget. Um, personnel, part-time personnel is a little bit high because we've been desperately covering gaps, but at our last meeting, the board um, agreed to fund up to $28,000 for additional staffing. So that will be a little bit of a relief. And I was advised by accounting to just track those hours and then submit a, you know, a request to shift the money um, like in May or closer to the end of the fiscal year. So I'm not terribly concerned. We're supposed to be spending all year and keeping an eye on budget. Um, for FY24, we uh, had a 10%, over 10% increase request to fully staff the building. Um, but we need to keep a million dollars in free cash and you can't always get what you want. So we had to trim it back. Um, so I'm asking for a 6.66% increase. Um, and that's what we presented at FinCom at their hearing on March 15th. Thanks to those of you who came out. Um, we're looking to increase one staff member from 19 to 35 hours and adding an 18 hour a week position in the teen room so that we'll have coverage from you know two to five or 2.30 to 6, which is our busiest time of day. 
um, it does still leave us at a significant, significant deficit for continuing to cover all desks, all hours, um, and maintain all of the meetings, programs, outreach that we do. Um, we have budgeted also next year um, for six hours a week for on-call temps, um, but that doesn't even cover half of the leave time that benefited staff have, whether they have two weeks or four weeks uh, of vacation. So we will continue to do the best we can, um, thinly staffed. Our minimum staffing is still, we can run the building with four people and close one department. So that's what we'll be doing next year too. Okay. All right, uh, thank you, Beth. Any questions or comments about the budgets? Okay, seeing none. Uh, Beth, again, um, do we have an IT update? Yes, we have laptops uh, almost ready for deployment. Oh, wow. <laughs> it only took a year and a half. Um, I think there still is, an, uh, the idea was they would be setting up a server. And I don't know why they still have not been able to do that for the software deep freeze that we're going to be using, um, which every time somebody opens up or logs in the computer, it's when you're finished, supposed to delete um, any files that you might have downloaded, all the history and all of that. So from like a management point of view and a, a virus protection point of view, it's something that we really want to protect people's privacy and keep junk that isn't needed off of those computers. But um, they're tagged, I think they need barcodes. And we're gonna make sure that they're uniform in terms of like what's available for software and what website does it open to. Um, and we're gonna try deploying 10 of them, probably um, my staff will kill me if I do it in April, <laughs> but we'll aim for April, but it, it might not be until until we have a little bit more relief. We're gonna be focusing on training temps next month. Uh, and any new thing that we introduce is a big challenge right now. Okay. But they're almost ready to go. Okay. Um, and we have not yet switched over to Office 365. Um, I had a weird thing happen this week where I, I came back from vacation and all of a sudden couldn't open or edit any documents. And I could only uh, create and save documents that were in Board 97 in 2003. So I went back in time, uh, IT was on site and fixed that. Uh, they're also, <laughs> Aaron knows how it happened. They're also working on, um, Allison um, Kusher, who's been working off site, wasn't able to access shares, so they're working to get her up to speed. So we see them most Tuesdays for at least a little bit of time, um, and they are generally responsive and. <laughs> okay. Aaron, can you shed some light on that? <laughs> um, well, I'll certainly, um, uh, I can shed light on, on whatever questions you, you might have, um, Beth, but certainly um, the question that I had was what we discussed maybe a meeting or two ago about um, the multi-factor authentication um, mm -hmm. for the tokens. Um, yeah. So is it, how is that being handled? Um, if you could just speak to that a little bit, because I know you were yeah. um, talking about uh, staff were either being required to add it to their personal devices or there was, um, you know, uh, standalone devices that they could use. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I don't know. Everybody's on Facebook, right? So there's a there's a Facebook group called ALATT, American Library Association Think Tank. It's not actually related to ALA, but this actually just came up very recently. It's been a very controversial subject. Um, and I think still controversial in town. We haven't had to do it yet, but has not an issue. Um, and I believe that if the union determines it to be a, a change in working conditions, then they can bring that to bargaining when we sit down for bargaining. Okay. Um, but there was sort of a, well, you know, we're not gonna worry about it right now. We need to be able to do our work and we want the telecommute privilege, but also it doesn't seem fair to tie telecommuting. You know, like we had a snow day and Evan said, work from home. But if you don't have that thing installed on your personal device to get to your work material, then you can't work. We're still figuring it out. I have plenty of things that staff can do that wouldn't require them to use email um, or to access our shares document. On a telecommute day, there's lots of professional development and professional reading and things that they can do. Um, so it becomes an issue if we have to say shut down for a long period of time or somebody's out for a long period of time and would need access to email. Or if we were, if we decided, well, the library's closed due to inclement weather or whatever reason, but you can still call or email staff. So 
so on, on my laptop, if my phone on my desk rings and I'm logged into the town VPN from anywhere, my computer gets a little pop up and I can respond to the call on my computer. So. Yeah, I mean, um, I'd, I'd be happy. Settled. Yeah, I'd be happy to advise but, with you if you'd like. Um, you know, wh one of the things um, at, at the bank uh, where I work is the um, the the bank tellers. Uh, they don't often want to use their personal device, uh, nor should they. Um, so, and the bank won't give them a phone or a token. So, what they'll do is, um, in this case, they'll have the service now ring the desk phone that's sitting right next to them. Um, and I know that doesn't really help because then it's still ringing call. Yeah. So it's just a phone number. It's no text messages. It's no, you know, uh, not related to a device at all. Right. Yeah. So, so that was a nice compromise for, for the tellers. Um, and they seem to like that as long as you have the phone nearby and are willing to pick it up, you can press one to confirm and then you're in. Yeah. So that's a new thing with Microsoft. Um, but I'm happy to talk in more detail. If yeah. You want. That would be great. I'll look into it because when we asked, like, well, could we use it? Could we get a text like to a Google number? That was it. No, this is the only way to do it. There were wow. no other options. So that's surprising. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, something. Uh, all right. Is that everything, Aaron? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, John. Uh, so I guess it, when they when they are kind of telecommuting, and uh, how are they planning on to? planning on accessing their email anyway from a personal computer? That's a good question. I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. I, so, okay. so I take it back. We have laptops we can use. So if they bring, the, if they know the weather's going to be bad and they were in work the day before, then they can be using it on, on their work device. Um, okay. But they would need to, um, when they first started making changes and I brought my work, laptop home i couldn't just check my email i had to log on to the town vpn and i was like what <laughs> why, why did that change um and now if i do take it home and i'm just on my wi-fi like i can get my work gmail but i can't get the shares drive i mean i have my work gmail on my phone yeah um and, and i'll just reiterate i mean uh i think i've said it probably twice already but but the authenticator apps are, are generally very light and they're Usually not actually connected to anything. They're they're basically just a random number yeah. generator. Um, but so I, it's, I'll just leave it I at that. It's, it's principle of the thing, and yeah, I mean it's yeah. not it's not the board's jurisdiction. It's nothing you can solve. It's a town thing. But the commentary that I saw on the ALA TT Facebook group was if you do anything work related on your personal devices, they can be subpoenaed, and you know everything we do is public record. So it can be just like kind of sticky, dangerous thing. Like just keep it separate. And, you know, I see both both points of view. It's not a big deal. You got to get the work done, but also then they can pay. You know, for you to get it done the way you need to get it done. So I guess it's, it's not an issue yet. Uh, we'll see when it becomes an issue where the lines get drawn. And, and you're if, saying again, we'll like, be talking about it next month. <laughs> and the next and, month. And, <laughs> Yeah, and again, again, if you're if you're out for a day or you're, you, you you get a, a phone call or text message or you check the library website, you know we're closed. Um, right now we're just tracking on like a Google Drive. All right, what's your work plan and, and document your telecommuting there. You can get from your library computer. So it doesn't actually require email access generally unless you decide you're going to be checking your email during that shift. Do you, do you know if the office, the office 365 will support a web web interface for email because then they can check email just through the web browser from their personal it's um it's outlook we're getting outlook as part of that changeover and what we were told was from off-site you will need an authenticator to access shares and to read your email. Yep. Okay. yeah so right. we tested it out it works it has not been required yet uh -huh. all right thank you everyone for that um Next is the Grafton Public Library capital campaign. Uh, Dana, is there an update of what's happened in the past month? Um, yes. Well, I did miss last month, and I apologize. It was the school vacation. Um, a couple of things is, um, and Beth, I wanted to let you know, um, Beth had asked for a an authorized personnel sign, and so that's be, that's in the works, Beth. So that's been approved, and it's it's Sunshine is working on that. Um, the, our current right now, um, our plan is 
what's happening right um what i think what everyone probably already knows is we've had we did we have put um we had some work some donor plaques already installed we had one installed in the wheelock in the wheelock um reading room and then we also had the um the we help we redid the dedication plaque that we had all there were needed corrections blah 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 that's done so the things that we're working on right now we believe we should we're thinking like we're or it should be ready by may a lot of this work is being done in a foundry that is in um it's in wisconsin and there's been some issues with making sure that we are very happy we're happy with the, some of the design work so last um i think it was um i um a few like maybe two weeks ago or maybe less I, um, there was some issues, so I went to Sunshine, talked to them, we came up with a solution, and that solution is now being worked on by them and the foundry. So um, that's what we're anticipating, that it should be in May, we're gonna have, we're gonna have um, a couple, we're gonna have like a couple donor parties. So that will be coming and we'll let everyone know. So um, that's one thing. The other thing is um, we have been, work we had a separate group working, um, we had sort of like a library trustee group um, working with some members of the capital campaign to review the list that Beth had given us a while ago of things that are needed, furniture, mirrors, all kinds of things. So we've reviewed, we've, we're finished our work. Monday, um, I am meeting with Beth and Doug is gonna be attending in person at the library to review that after the building and construction meeting. So that, that will push that, that will, that should mean that we should be able to get going with that and order the stuff that's needed. Um, and then we just have a couple more projects to finish that we're out of the scope. So we're going, my goal is to try to get them done by June, if that's possible, end of June. And then um, we're going to, there are a couple little things that we're clearing up with some of the, what, some of the work that was done, the landscaping, everything. There's some bushes that died and we're going to work on replacing them. And also we're going to, um, come up with, we're just gonna make sure everything looks good and it's ready, you know, spring slash summer and figure out what we need to do. So we may have Perot, Perot was our vendor who did all the beautiful plantings, the native plantings. And so they're going, we're gonna probably have them come in and do a few things and tell us what we need to do and they'll do some as well. And the really beautiful thing of that is that we are having a dedication plaque um, to um, Rose Perot because she, her family is the one that she and her husband own the land the library is currently built on. And years ago, many, many years ago, when I was the chair, like probably 2009, is when all the negotiations started for that, for, for that, for to, to get secure the land. So um, Hank Puller was instrumental in that. So we're thanking them with a nice, with a nice plaque. So that, that I think that's a really good community effort. You know, communities on ball with with everything. So. So good stuff are happening. We're wrapping up things. We continue, you know, we have other things to do. We're an ongoing organization. We're 501c3. We have a charter and we have, you know, organizational rules that we follow. So we will be in existence and that's done so that we don't have to redo any, have to go back to the federal government and ask them for another committee that can help, that actually can do fundraising for the library for capital campaign, capital things and also, uh, furniture and computers and all that. So we'll, we'll still always be here, but we're hoping that most of our projects will be done. And there are some that are like out there that we're still kind of in discussions with Beth and others about. So that's that's what's happening. And we're, we're I don't know if Doug has anything to add. Um, it's been great that he's on the building committee and as also on the capital campaign. That's been very helpful. Mm -hmm. well, uh, Doug, anything to add? Uh, nothing for me. Nothing okay. for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, Dana, thank you for that update. All right. Next, we have a Friends membership and update. It's listed as Beth, but we also have Carrie from the Friends here, too. So I don't know uh, who wants to give the update here. I was not able to attend the meeting, so Carrie should. Carrie! Thanks. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy that I decided to join. Yes. So, um, so, so we we did meet last night, and we are all excited for our upcoming egg hunt, which is going to be on the common April first. 
um, Representative David Meradian has um, uh, kindly um, accepted our invitation to serve as our MC for the 10 and the 11 uh, a.m. hunts. And um, on Tuesday, was it Tuesday? Yeah, on Tuesday, yesterday, um, uh, Chief Crapo kindly um, accepted my request um, to uh, provide pr police detail to assist with crossing to and from the common to the library, which is very generous because it's a little pricey for us to pay for that. Um, it's a four hour minimum detail. So um, the, the, um, the station police officer will be uh, on, on site from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., which is um, more than what we need. Um, and so we're very gratefully accepting of that. Um, we have, um, we have 100 um, tickets for the 10 a.m. and the 11 a.m. hunt. Ticket sales are going very well. There are still tickets available. Um, we are not planning to have any tickets available um, at the actual hunt. Um, all the tickets you need should be purchased in advance. Um, and we do you know, uh, two raffles at each of the hunts as part of uh, uh, as part of the, the egg hunt. So we have a very well-oiled machine. Uh, Michelle Delal has a, a tremendous checklist that we use every year and um, it's, it's a lot of fun. So we're, we're really very excited. Um, typically we would do our community read in March and um, we and um, Heidi um, does a, a terrific job. She reached out to us and asked if we could possibly do it this year in May. And that actually, absolutely works for us. So the date for that is going to be May 11th. Um, she picked um, a novel that is an epistolary style. I don't think I said that right, Beth, I can correct me, um, but you letter writing style book. So um, very, very exciting. So we'll provide food for that and you know encourage our members to attend and, but Heidi will be the one you know, to, to lead that. Um, I think those are really the major things that we have. Um, again, we are gonna be looking to uh, getting a vending machine for our friend's corner now that we have the wider space. Um, standard size um, vending machines uh, will fit, we believe, and um, we'll be able to start offering things like uh, curry cups, you know, K cups and, and that for you know coffee stations. So we're very excited. Um, we, of course, will have our annual meeting. Usually that's in June, so that'll be upcoming as well. I think that's everything we did have. So Beth, there was one thing that we didn't get to talk to you about yesterday. Um, we, we would, you know, the friends actually would like to offer to help organize um, the attic space. Um, we have a tremendous, you know, organizers with uh, Mary, uh, Marianne and with um, Betsy. And um, so we would be very happy to do that and maybe, um, you know, supply some shelving or something. But, um, but next, next meeting, we could talk about that with you a little bit more and uh, kind of help get that organized. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, Carrie. That worked out very well here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, back to Beth. Uh, COVID-19 update. I, I don't have anything except that I got a complaint yesterday about the hand sanitizer, which is uh, by the doors as you come in. Yeah. It was donated in 2020. <laughs> and a patron said it was pretty nasty smelled like stale tequila and couldn't we do something better? And I said, yeah, you're right. So I'm gonna be working on that. Okay. All right. And let's see, uh, no, we did not have a walk about this past month. Um, let's see. And that brings us to new business. Um, we have a remote meeting update. And Beth, I don't know if you know anything about this or just what we talked about. All I know is that the order expires, I believe the 31st of March, which will require us to return to in-person. Yeah. Um, and I said, we just book a meeting room here. Mm -hmm. um, I would need to get in touch with GCTV and the more notice they have, the better if they need to come and film. Yeah. Um, I don't, I assume they could come and film and archive it. We've never actually gone live and I don't know what other live meetings we might be competing against on the fourth Wednesday of the month. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I said it would, might be challenging to run a hybrid meeting. I know that Mr. Datoma does not like uh, the OWL device that we got. Um, it, it, it's great for a hybrid meeting that's not then gonna go on cable TV. Uh -huh. The quality is not great, it kind of floats. Um, it works very well for Zoom, for you know a Zoom meeting. Uh -huh. so my preference would be kind of all or nothing, either we're remote or, or we're hybrid. Right. Uh -huh. uh, it is up to this board, I think, to right. decide okay. hybrid or not. All right, so I know we um, have the community room booked for next month for our 
monthly meeting. Um, Aaron? Uh, you're on mute. I put my hand down. I hit the wrong button. Yes. <laughs> um, so I've not attended one of the um, select board meetings, but certainly I'd be willing to hear someone's um, thoughts on that because I know that they use it for any sort of community outreach. And, um, and can anybody comment on how that's filmed? Because I'm sure it's filmed as, as one of their uh, regular meetings. And I would assume that yeah. we would just do the same thing. No, they uh, they meet on site at the municipal center and have a studio. So that would be an option, which is what we used to do, which is we meet, we go through Cindy Eyed, um, book the space if it's available. And you know we, we haven't always met on the fourth Wednesday because there's other competing groups. Um, and they tend to like in January set their year's worth of meetings. So we have to look at the municipal calendar and see when we can get in. The good news though, is that more than one room is now wired um, for broadcast and for broad, you know recording and then um, archiving and posting after the fact. So, uh -huh. so yeah. let me understand So I don't know that, that we booked the meeting room for next month. Um, so the community outreach means that it's broadcast and meaning the public sit in the community room at the library yeah. and the select board is, is still at the municipal center? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Those meetings are live, which is different than, like, like can can we do a live meeting on the fourth Wednesday? I don't know. Well, I'm just saying, how do they record that? I'm sure it's recorded. Yeah, it. So I'm saying we could do the same thing, probably without a lot of trouble. So, so my yeah, preference. If there's would not be, a conflict. Yeah, my preference <laughs> would be government. would be number one. Um, uh, try to use the community room because you know we haven't done that yet. That yeah. would be my preference, rather than go back to the municipal center. Uh, and then plan uh, my second would would be to go back to the municipal center, which it's a great mm -hmm. room, yeah. and um, it's kind of fun to to be there with all the multimedia and sure. and, and reconnect with Bill, our old recording guy, yes. our old uh, <laughs> yeah. So it's great. So so what I think what I'm what I'm trying to say is, if it's it's just going to be Bill with one camera, which is a little bit different than the setup of the municipal center. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll reach out and ask them. Yeah, yeah that would be my preference. Okay. Any other thoughts? All right, uh, Dana, I saw you. I thought that, um, I thought that, yes, I thought that was one of the objectives of the community room to, I thought that we had planned it so that um, it is set up for the um, cable, cable TV group to be able to film, right? Yes, yeah, so there's two different things going on here that we, we set it up to go live with programming. Oh, okay. So, so that has to mean that that there's nothing conflicting currently on the government channel that you're going oh, yeah, to right. write or conflict with. Okay. So that, that's all I'm trying to say. And then and I get it the too. Food, the com and the community room might be really busy. So I think the community, that so too. maybe, maybe we can do a hybrid, maybe be there some days, but I, I think you're right. The, well, I'm thinking the community room should be open for the public before us. Yeah. Well, I, we are, we are booked no, like for the 26th. So mm -hmm. okay. I have to figure out the recording. <laughs> okay. I get it. Now I think whatever makes sense and okay. I, I get it. I, I think we should do whatever we, we think works best and the community uh -huh. get to use the room. I, uh -huh. I get that. Uh -huh. Carrie, do you have any insight? <laughs> well, I, I just, um, I had a question. So you mentioned it being live. Um, I recall that we previously um, had the meetings over at the municipal center that it had been recorded. So yeah. Grafton Cable TV recorded it and it was broadcast at a later date. So it certainly wasn't live. The public were certainly um, welcome and able to attend in the audience and could you know could ask questions, but it was, was not a live broadcast unless it's changed. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. I think that's how it was when we last met yeah. in person. It was just recorded. I think we felt our meetings weren't that exciting. Maybe they yes. <laughs> All right. I was just going to, I was just going to reiterate what Aaron said. My first choice would be the community room. Mm -hmm. and the second would be the municipal center. Yeah. All right. So Beth, if you just want to let us know what is going yeah. on with that. Okay. We'll do. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, the next thing is a letter of support for the Mass Historical Commission grant. And that's for the um, cupola. Uh, Beth, do you want to speak to that? I can. I don't know if you sent it out to everybody to look at. Um, so we applied um, to the Mass Historic Commission for partial funding to restore and preserve our cupola, which has rotted wood, peeling paint, and some of the flashing missing um, and the missing 
splashing led to leaking after a rainstorm into the attic and then down into the new his, newly renovated restored historic reading room. So you have to submit the application by the deadline, which was Friday, March 17th. Um, I did send it out in February for feedback. Um, William Blake looked at it and gave some suggestions. We were not able to solicit a quote in time because of weather. We actually need um, the architect who we were trying to work with to get a, a crane or a lift um, and then get up close to the cupola to take the pictures that are required and to assess what work needs to be done and how much you know, damage or, or wear there is on the cupola. Um, and then they were going to, we did, we did something to sort of a quick fix for the flashing so it wouldn't keep leaking, but it was a real stopgap. We're also gonna have that architect wrap the cupola to prevent any further damage either to it or to the historic reading room. So he was supposed to come last week and now can't get out until the 27th. So I have submitted an incomplete grant application to Mass Historic Commission, which they assured me I can do. They're gonna take a few weeks to review all the applications and then send back a letter saying you're missing, you know, a letter of recommendation, you're missing the quote, you're actually missing the scope of work. So at this date, I actually have no idea how much the project would cost or what other pools of money in town we might wanna be looking at pulling from to get this restored. Um, the cupolas wear and, wear and tear, like it's, it's weather related. It, that's the best way I can think of to put it. Um, it was restored 20 years ago with a, in part by a grant from Mass Historic Commission. We mm -hmm. looked at it every time I had someone come and clean the gutters because I had that person, you know, check the roof and check the shingles, those, the slate shingles on the roof as well. Um, and it was at the construction project after we'd been out of the building for almost, I don't know, six or eight months that it was brought to Andy's attention um, as the clerk of the works that the cupola was in need of some attention. So we've been aware since December 2020 that it was deteriorating and needed some work done. Um, and it wasn't able to be repaired repaired or restored or given attention under that construction project because all of that contingency money went to um, soil remediation because of the three leaking underground storage tanks that we had on, on the library site. So it wasn't like we didn't know or didn't take care of it, just didn't have the money in the scope of that project. So Mass Historic Commission has a grant every two years. Um, they provide some matching funding. It's always matching funding. They're, they never pay for anything completely. It has to fit under the restoration or, and preservation category um, and follow pretty strict guidelines, um, you know, including like we can't uh, replace it with a wood laminate or, or, or plastic that looks like wood. It has to be actual wood. Um, the paint, you know, should be period colors and match and, and all of that. Um, they would be look, you know, we, we could ask CPC for funding, but you know, like another issue I'm running into is, you know, I, I needed the estimate for CPC by February 24th, so they can write their town meeting warrant to include it for May. So I've been, you know, scrambling to put this grant together. We sent it off by deadline and complete. We're waiting to hear their response to what's missing. Hopefully we complete, can complete it. Hopefully they will decide that it is a, it is a worthy project and meets their criteria um, and we'll get it taken care of. So one of the requirements is a letter of support. You have to have one from your local uh, historic commission or historic district commission. So the library is not, um, doesn't I think qualify as a historic building, but we are a part of the historic district. So that's our qualification. Um, so HDC and HC need to write letters of support. One of those two groups has for me. Um, and then I also asked the historical society, the board of trustees, the capital campaign, um, it might've been somebody else that I asked if they would also write a letter of support for the need for the project. Um, the iconic silhouette of the cupola that really adds to the common and the architectural integrity of the front of our 1927 Georgian building. I hope it was compelling, uh, but again, like I don't have a price. I just don't, and I won't for another at least two weeks. Okay. Uh, I suppose then we're we're just hoping for good weather yeah. on the 27th, uh, correct? Yeah. If there, uh, if if that letter, I. I the letter that I got uh, needed a change, so I sent that feedback back. Uh, but if it didn't get out to the board, I, we can't ask the board tonight to vote to approve the letter right. um, to include in the packet. And like I said, I, I think I might have a couple of weeks, but it could be that I'll need to turn it around before April 26th, which is the date of our uh -huh. next meeting. Uh -huh. So if there is such a letter that would need to be voted on, I'd be asking to have a quick meeting to vote uh -huh. to approve or not. 
um, okay. before that meeting date. All right, just let us know. Uh, Dana? I have a couple questions um, and comments, mostly questions. Um, I guess, so I know that, I, I think it's, I understand that you said you got an extension. I no, guess. No, I did not. No. no. I had what to did you get in, then? Uh, I had to turn in an incomplete grant submission. Okay. So now I'm waiting to hear back okay. to see what they'll tell me is missing, and then they'll give me a new date to submit what's the, okay. the missing pieces by. Okay. Not an extension. They would not give an extension. See, that's what I want. That's what I wasn't clear on. But yeah. I guess this is my concern, and maybe it's too late, or maybe we have to deal with the risk because um, I'm you. I'm just kind of surprised. Well, I'm surprised that they were actually not giving you an extension, but letting you give stuff at a later date. I'm just That's hoping that I'm just hoping that won't affect their judgment mm -hmm. of the application or what the amount they give us. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what the alternative would be to wait, but I don't, what I'm not, the other thing I don't think, I don't know about or we're not clear on is, I know you said there's an, the architect looked at it. Is that David King or is that the, is that wrong? Yeah. It is. So David King uh, is the person who did the restoration, oversaw the restoration before. And yeah, he's still in business um, okay. and he's got an engineer he's working with. So, yeah. Okay. And he's the only we went person. Out to bid. Sorry. Okay. All right. Yeah. But he's the, so right to date, right now, no one's, has anyone physically gone up there and looked at it? Well, I mean, I went up on the roof and looked at it and took the pictures for the grant. <laughs> But okay. like I haven't climbed into the attic. No, but I um, no, I'm not expecting yeah, David, that. But I mean, like David yeah. hasn't been up there. So um, yeah, he he has, but like he's okay. in precarious. I'm pretty sure okay. he has, but he still needs like a, a crane to get around to get the close up look of the whole exterior. Yeah, I yeah, I'm not. I understand that. I was just <laughs> trying to figure out how much do we really know the state of it. That's what I'm just trying to figure out. And well, I it, yeah, I'm not an architect, and all he can do because he's not a contractor, right? So all he could do was, you know, here, here's what I would charge okay. you to go assess it so that I can give you an estimate. And then okay. once we have an estimate, then we go out to bid for a contractor. Okay, so that's what we would be paying for him to go up there and look at him being David King to review it, go up there with the crane and come up with an estimate and determine the scope of the problem. Is that it? I'm not, no, I'm actually not clear on how we're paying for that piece that has already begun. So that's I know, a question I know, for but, William. Okay. So, but yeah, so we would pay not only for the architectural oversight, but also for the contractor who would do the actual work. Oh, okay. Okay. It so does we're not, not sound as extensive as the last time. I, my understanding is last time they actually removed the cupola. Is that true? And took it away, like the Christmas tree, and I, brought it back. I, I, so I can't. That I, was I a long time ago. You know, I'm just trying to understand. It sounds to me yeah. like we. It, we're not sure what the scope of the project is yet. We yeah, will be when the not. crane is up there. Okay. Yeah. So that's really, I mean, can I just say something that, and I know Beth is doing her best, but mm -hmm. that is pretty hard to get a grant when you don't know the scope of the project. And um, I think what's happened with this community preservation, we unfortunately did miss their first grant round, but they do have another one, I believe, that's coming up in the summer. But I know that, or late, late spring, summer, we, they have to have their warrant information by, um, I, I know, sometime in June. And so yeah. if they approve it, they put a warrant on on the town to go on the town floor. And then we as citizens vote on uh -huh. it. They're in just October. making a recommendation. Okay. Yeah. But I so think it's October. due. It's due. Yeah. Town municipal has deadlines that are advanced. I just wondered. I just wanted yeah. to declare that. So we really don't know what we're getting into until David King can go up there and with the crane and really see what's what. Yeah. And we don't, I mean, so we don't even know how, it, how much it's, if it's really, so we don't know. Okay. So we don't really know if it's deteriorated, but it, it seems to me like this isn't like maintenance to me, this is more restoration. And that's, that's what the historical groups will be wanting to do. That's yeah. restoration, which is, I, I think this is what they said is, and that's both the state and local. So that's that's what I was trying to understand. So we're still, yeah. we got to figure this whole thing out. We're just in the beginning of it. It just happens to be that these grants are immediate, but we, okay. Because uh -huh. I was thinking if we had to, we could wait the, until the next mass historical, until their next round of grants. Yeah, but that's two years. So it's yeah. two years. Okay. Yeah, I that, best case clear. scenario is they do declare that it is restoration, um, that we're able to, work with CPC and get them to pay for some of it. I mean, I, I did write in the draft application that 
um, if we could split it four ways, three or four ways that Mass Historic could take a piece, CPC could pay for some, state aid could pay for some, and capital well, campaign could pay for some. Well, I didn't I send you a list. Beth, but I looked at everything that they did last the last grant round, and most of them were in the 40 to 50s. And right. there were some libraries, they weren't like town libraries, but they were libraries. So it would be really great if we could get within that range. Uh, yeah. Well, the the word of mouth off the cuff from 2020, December 2020 was 80 grand. But I can tell you that architects. No, no, no. I mean the amount like, of money to get from the granters. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I went that would be the, half. Four, yeah. yeah 40,000 would be half. I mean, this is, we're kind of guessing. But we just got to go on the facts that you have, and those are the facts from last year. I don't know, so yeah. I was just okay. That help. That's helpful to me. Okay, uh, Doug. I'm just wanting to summarize the last whatever ten or fifteen minutes. So you yeah. submitted a grant. It was incomplete. They know that it was incomplete. Yeah. Ideally, we get um, the estimate for the cupola. We can submit all that information in time for them to review it, and then of course we'll just wait for their response yeah okay yeah okay and then if they award the work has to take place between i think july 1st this year and june 30th 2024 mm -hmm. okay great thank you all right very good all right the final item under new business is a funding request the 236 dollars from state aid for uh beth's ala membership that's the American Library Association. I make a motion to fund $236 from state aid for the ALA membership for the director. All right. Yeah. Aaron, second. Okay. Any discussion or questions? No. Okay. Uh, Karen, I. Doug? Doug, I. Uh, John? John, I. Dana? I. Aaron? Aaron, I. Marty? I. Okay, that is done and carried. As everyone can tell, everyone has moved around my screen. We have a new order here. All right, our next item is a policy update, and we have a variety of things to vote on. So, Aaron, it's all yours. Great, thank you, Karen. Um, so, because of a scheduling conflict with the uh, uh, Finance Committee, um, uh, budget review. Uh, we didn't meet um, yet uh, this month, but we're going to meet on Monday. Um, but since I was unable to provide an update at the last um, February meeting, I'll just give a quick summary of our uh, the last time we met on, on the 8th. Um, we had Christy Proctor um, join us from the Accessibility Commission, uh, which has been really great and valuable feedback from her when we're, um, you know, uh, trying to figure out the best way to um, you know, make sure our policies are, are accessible for everybody, um, which is the goal. Um, so during that meeting, we discussed um, the draft art uh, display policy, which is still uh, with legal. I think it's since um, come back from legal, but this was, you know, a month and a half ago. Um, we also discussed the camera policy, which, uh, you know, we're going to vote on tonight. Um, and we talked about uh, footage availability on library grounds. Occasionally, patrons will say, hey, something happened outside the library and I, you got cameras and I want to see the camera footage, but we just don't have coverage. Um, so we talked about if somebody would, you know, would, would want to request it, we would just say, well, um, we don't have that area um, covered. So we would just deny the request. Um, we also uh, uh, finalized a parking policy and we merged in um, the electric vehicle charging policy, uh, removed some specific pricing. Um, that we felt could be subject to change, you know, based on if the municipal center gets um, uh, vehicle charging stations. So it was better just to to point people to the app and they can look it up themselves. And so uh, we've written how that can be done. Um, the the weather policy, um, there was a bit of uh, employee specific verbiage, um, which we removed um, and some removed some outdated alert systems that the town no longer uses. So that's a nice fresh an up-to-date uh, weather policy for your review. Um, we also discussed the, the food, we're discussing the food and kitchen policy. Um, you know, we just, we talked at length about uh, trash um, being generated from food in and around the library. Um, you know, so we were toying around with ideas about um, keeping the food 
that was kind of odorous or you know greasy or just um, you know if it could be rather messy uh, you know in, in the cafe area. Otherwise, I mean, it's um, food is really allowed anywhere in the library. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, large events, um, you know, we we toyed around the idea of if, if you're going to be generating a lot of volume of trash, you can't really expect the the library to kind of haul it all away. So we we're uh, discussing ideas on on how to write that into the policy if either people take it with them or um, you know agree to keep the trash volume low or whatever. So if anybody has any thoughts and would like to um, you know, help us uh, with that policy, you know, please email me or join our next meeting. Um, so I won't go uh, too much further until we're ready to, to vote on the next couple of policies. So um, I'll happily, uh, um, I guess, I'll turn it back over to Karen for, for motions. Okay, so the first policy up for a vote is the security camera policy. So I, I make a motion to approve the camera security policy. Okay, do we have a second? If I can second, I'll second. Okay, and um, any further discussion? Oh, I have one, um, one yeah. bit that I noticed after the fact. Um, I think 2F, uh, the, the word says accorded. I think it was meant to be afforded in, in line 2F, if you have, guys have that in front of you. Um, All right, yes. Uh, recorded <laughs> data will be accorded the same level of confidentiality. Is that it? Yeah, I think it should be afforded. I think we're all in agreement, unless okay. somebody says otherwise. All right. All right. Uh, Debbie, is that something that you would change? In the final. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, yeah, I had to go. Um, Beth oh. is, has been doing that, but we, we can get that changed. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. I don't know if she has that. Hold up. We'll make a note and get that changed in the in the official okay. copy. All right. Thank you for that. All right. Any other questions or discussions about the security camera policy? No? Okay, so I guess we'll do the vote. Uh, Karen, I. Doug. Doug, I. John. John, I. Uh, Dana. I. Sorry. All right. Aaron. Aaron, I. Marty. I. All right. Declare that motion carried. The next one is the parking lot policy. Doug? I make a motion to approve the parking lot policy. All right, thank you. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, thanks, John. All right, any questions or further discussion? Doug? I do have a couple questions. Um, yeah. One, I mean, I noticed the electric vehicle charging is integrated in this policy. Um, was there a discussion about separating those or? Is it just because it's in the parking lot, it's in the same policy? I mean, that's pretty minor, but um, yeah, that was so my, yep. We did have a separate policy. Um, and, you know, rather than maintaining two policies uh, for the parking lot, we felt that um, both policies were related to the parking lot. And we, and I mean, the the electrical uh, electric vehicle policy was many, many pages and didn't really need to be because a lot of what was being said about the, um, um, the electric vehicle charging policy was already in the parking policy. So there was some redundancy. So we really pared it down quite a bit. Uh, and we took out, you know, a lot of the pricing models and things that we had. And we feel like it's a more complete policy by putting the two together. Um, okay, then my second question is um, the AMP up application. I mean, that's a third party application that people would install on their phone. Um, does it do things like, I mean, one of the things I'm worried about is that whole section about if they leave their car parked, you know, in there yeah. charging more than it's charged, and then right. we're going to start charging them. Is that app, um, I mean, we don't have any control over the app. Does that app have enough information like to notify people like those parking apps that say, you know, your car is fully charged, it's time to go get your car and move it. I'm just worried that someone is going to be in a, a library program, you know, for two hours and their car is going to, they're going to incur charges because they've sat there too long. 
Yeah, I, I don't know if there's any other option. Um, you know, Beth could possibly speak to that, but um, you know, honestly, I, it's hard when when you don't have an electric vehicle to really kind of vet it. Um, you know, certainly we could chat with the vendor, but at least, you know, as far as the policy goes, like that's what's, that's the app that's to be used. And I'm sure there's some information in there about it. Um, and I would hope that it would certainly notify, like you said, but I don't have those answers. Um, do you, Beth, yeah, or anybody okay. who has an EV? Yeah, I, I can tell you that there was somebody who I think left their vehicle overnight. And I ha we had said it that um, if you're charged and you're taking up the space and preventing other people from charging and, uh, the, the charger earning money, um, then there's a surcharge. So somebody I think got charged like $17 to charge overnight and was upset. And I said, I'll tell you what, I will give you the code so that you can park for free um, the next time um, and look into changing it or editing it. I'm really waiting for the town to come up with a policy. Um, it was funded by a grant, but the grant allows us to charge a fee for it and collect it. It goes into the town general fund, so it doesn't come back to any library coffers. And the town may very well decide we want to encourage people to park so that it's nominal and not charge anything, in which case it, it's all moot. Um, also, all four of them are not working at the moment, and I'm working with William to try and resolve it. It's possible from them being hit before we got a bumper and a sign um, that there, there's just been enough damage to them that they're just not working at the moment. So if the AMP UP software does not disclose the charges that we've set, then I would have a separate QR code going to a, um, a library website so people could scan it and see it. Okay. Um, but until Beth, it's working again, I'm not having to put it yeah. up. Beth, whose responsibility is it to fix those? So it's out of warranty from whoever installed it. And AMP UP doesn't own them. All they do is manage the money piece. And Andy signed a, a an agreement over multiple years with them to, you know, provide the basically like the, the internal banking uh, and, and software and, and app access to allow people to pay for the charging. And I think even if we weren't charging people for it, we would still need like a way for people to access the electricity. I, like I don't think you could just plug it in, but I don't know. I I don't have an electric vehicle, so it's not Amp Up's responsibility. I think at this point it is. Town of Grafton or library or so we need to get an electrician to take a look at it. We res oh. I reset all the breakers as was suggested by AMP up um, and they said it's like there's no there's just no electricity getting to it. Okay. Uh, Carrie? Thank you. So, um, so I'm, I'm I'm surprised to hear that they're not uh, available. I um, I'm actually looking to get an electric electric vehicle, but do not have one currently. Um, when I was at the library last night, I noticed that you have the there's a very nice painted green um, markings, which I think is pretty new because I didn't notice them before. But I so I I kind of looked not really closely because again I wasn't parking there. But I didn't notice anything that says these are all out of order. So is there some kind of sign to alert the public that they're all four? I, I'm shocked that all four are yeah. out of order. So there, it's a, they're grouped into two. So one was out of order. I hadn't put a sign on it, and then the next one went out after the most recent storm. So I just haven't put up a sign. Yet. Okay, but all four are out of order, and there and there isn't a really clear sign at this point saying that they're all out of order. No. Because and is there anything on the library website to alert people that might be coming over to use those, or are there other spaces in town that people can use? Because you know, if I were looking to charge my car, planning to use, thinking there's four, you're not going to think that all four are going to be out. Yeah. So um, I don't think I have anything on the website. Most people would be using a device like Amp Up to look for a charging station, and Amp okay. Up will, will say that they're out of order. But I can okay. before I leave that's, tonight. That's fair. Up on and again, I don't have one yet, so that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, Dana, I just have a quick question. So, um, okay. So I'm just want. I guess this is. I don't know this stuff, so I, I'm very ignorant. I apologize. But um, does it cost a lot of electricity to, to? Are they using a lot of electricity? Are we? Is anybody making money from this? Like, or I mean, I'm just much? curious. Yeah, I think it's like sixty-five cents. And we're charging a dollar an hour. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's not. Oh, we're, okay. I just, yeah. I just trying to understand it. So we're recouping. And, I, and I've, I've both heard that that's the cheapest place around and the most expensive. 
at the same well, time. I, I, well, I know. I do know there no, <laughs> as far as I know, that we're the only, uh -huh. there's, I don't I think, think there's the any other one charging in stations in Grafton. But I was going to say, I know that those things really took a beating from people in the beginning. So I'm not surprised that yeah. we're having some difficulty. And, yeah. I'm not when, surprised at all. The, the the security camera footage caught yeah, a truck backing into it, but the cam cameras are not such that I can actually read the license plate or get an angle, even despite all the different cameras coming or going. I sent footage to GCTV. I asked staff for help identifying the patron. Yeah. Nobody knows who it is. We can't identify or charge the person who uh -huh. damaged it. Okay, but right now it's our responsibility to make sure they're up and working and just yeah. take care of them. Okay, yeah. all so right. I passed it on to somebody who can help me. Okay, thank uh -huh. you. I just uh -huh. clarify. That's good clarity. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, Debbie. Yeah, I just wanted to um, to say that when we had the poles got hit we had been looking into um, straightening the one pull out and replacing the other one. And it does require an electrician and DPW to come out and do that because as Beth mentioned, it's not under warranty anymore, but we were not having any electrical issues at the time. So it's just been something that sort of deteriorated over time and um, just relying on people to let us know uh -huh. that that's not working. Um, I just downloaded the amp up. I don't have an electric vehicle, but I'm going to put it on my phone and maybe it could just give us like a reading on as to whether or not they're up and running on a regular basis. Uh -huh. So we can keep up with that a little bit better. Okay. And then All mark right. them if, if they're not. All right. Um, any other discussion about the parking policy before we vote? No? Okay. So I'll go uh, Karen, I, Doug. Doug, I. Uh, Dana. I. Aaron. Aaron, I. And Marty. Aye. Okay, declare that passed. The uh, next policy up for vote is the inclement weather policy. I make Do a I motion to approve the inclement weather, inclement, inclement, inclement <laughs> weather <laughs> policy. Sorry. All right, thank you. Uh, Do I have a second? I second it. All right. Any further, any discussion? Uh, my only comment is I, I definitely agree with all the changes that were made with the things that were removed and stuff. I think it looks good. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. All right. Uh, not seeing any other questions. I'll do Karen. I. Uh, Doug. Doug, I. Dana. I. Aaron. Aaron, I. And Marty. I. Okay. Next is a is uh, the rental fee for the Friends of the Grafton Elders. Oh, and who would like to speak about that? I didn't rent it out. Beth. Sure, I can. So um, our room rental fee is currently set by the policy approved by the board as $50 an hour for an individual and um, $100 an hour for an organization or group. And any group doing fundraising can't meet for free in the library space during library operating hours. So if you're doing a fundraiser, you have to book it and pay to be after hours. So um, Friends of Grafton Elders, who does amazing work and amazing fundraising in town of Grafton, reached out with a date um and a time frame um i think we had determined at a sub policy committee that we felt comfortable with say for a saturday night or a friday night program comfortable with the program convener coming in from five to six allowing them to use the meeting space for free to do their setup and then having their event start at six or later and the charge would start like at six when the library closes so I think he wanted it from like five to 11 with cleanup. Um, we're gonna charge for four hours. And I came back with, that would be $100, $400. Um, and they said, this is a fundraiser and we're local and like every penny we need needs to go to craft and elders. So I said, let me bring it back to subcommittee. Subcommittee recommended we bring it here. So I'm looking for a motion to either waive the fee or reduce the fee. That's up to you. And then I will go back and then they will either choose to use our meeting space or not. But I think, I don't know. You guys can decide. I'm inclined to say, great, come on in. <laughs> um, Aaron, would you like to speak to this as the policy chair? 
Um, sure. Um, I don't, I, I'm not well versed in the policy in terms of um, if we've uh, uh, voted on this particular room policy and the fees yet. Beth, can you confirm? Okay. Yeah, yeah we so, do. Yeah, I can pull it up if you want. Yeah. So um, I think the initial uh, communication that I saw was um, that we could potentially reduce it, but I think it's a fantastic idea to support that group um, and, and, and provide it all gratis, but I'll certainly, um, um, you know, I'll let others make a motion, certainly, and we can discuss it. Mm -hmm. uh, Dana? I would agree with what Aaron's saying. In fact, I thought, I thought they were, they're not, I thought there was a 501c3 associated with the elders, but maybe I'm not, maybe I'm incorrect. Uh -huh. But I'm I'm fine with that, and I think we I think that that's a very important population in Grafton that we want to support, and this is a good way to do it. I just think that I guess the question I have are we I what are we doing when there's a this is when there's a nonprofit group are they are nonprofits still paying to to use the space? Is that happening? Because I thought I. Unless they're doing a partnership with the library, there is a facility rental fee for any after hours use. Okay. That was a policy that was agreed and voted on in 2021. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. I think I just heard it through the vine and I wanted yeah. to make sure, but I'm and fine. Then, I'm, I'm fine with doing this. We want to support the uh -huh. organization and uh, it's a very uh -huh. essential, it's a central part of Grafton. Uh -huh. um, Beth, I see you have this up and right now it's showing for individuals or groups without nonprofit status. So do we have a section for with, with nonprofit status? We don't. We don't, okay. No, we never determined that. Okay, so it almost seems like, all right, we vote on this and then maybe at some point the policy committee takes another look at nonprofits. All right, you know, I think this is just part of the growing pains. We didn't know what we didn't know because this has never been an issue. Nobody ever wanted to use the space, so. Okay, thank you. All right, Doug? Um, do we expect any to incur any costs, any cleaning costs to pay a janitor or anything? Because I would say maybe that's what we charge them, but otherwise I agree with the yeah. rest. And, and So a cleaning deposit of $100 is required and due in advance. So if we are not charging them, I would say they write a check and we hold it. Um, and if the room is left in not acceptable condition, then there may be an, a, a cleaning charge assessed. But like, I, I don't have a library custodian, remember? So we get 10 to 15 hours of cleaning a week when they can get to us. I doubt they're gonna be rowdy and make a big mess. <laughs> I mean, I could tell them that write a, write a check for $100 for the, the cleaning deposit, we'll hold it and give it back to you. Right. I wouldn't know how to look at the dirty room and say it's the value of the cleaning is $50 or $100. We don't have a separate company or service coming in. It's dependent on, again, town of Grafton custodial to clean, which they do after every meeting that we have. And sometimes it's really easy and sometimes there's glitter or glue. Um, most groups are very respectful and um, clean up very well afterwards. Awesome. Hasn't been an issue yet. Yeah, and according to their website, they say they're tax deductible and they have a tax ID, so they must be a 501c3. Yeah, they, they are a 501c3. Yeah. So I guess, I mean, if we need a motion, I'll make a motion to waive uh -huh. the room rental fee for the Friends of Grafton Elders and hold a cleaning deposit. Uh -huh. Okay. I second that. Okay. That's a, okay. Any further discussion? Okay, I'll do a vote. Uh, Karen, aye. Doug? Doug, aye. Uh, Dana? Aye. Oh, oh shoot, everyone just moved. Uh, um, Aaron? Aaron, aye. Marty? Aye. Okay, I think I got everybody. Okay, I declare the motion and carry. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next, the um, director's report. Uh, Beth, please. Oh, Harry? Sorry, I was waiting. Um, so I, I just wanted to ask a question about 
the volunteer policy, if there is one. Um, we so the friends. Um, uh, on behalf of the friends, I was trying to locate the library's policy on volunteers because we, you know, wanted to kind of piggyback on that for um, for friends volunteers. Okay. We actually created a new form um, that we're you're oh, utilizing you know now for um, friends. Yeah, Carrie, I wonder if you could um, ask Beth about that after the meeting. Sure. All right. Great. Thank you. All right. Okay. So. We were open 21 days in February, 7,068 visitors. We did have two early closures due to cold temperatures and the HVAC not being able to keep up with it on Saturday the 4th um, and inclement weather closing. I think we closed at 815 once. We had 72 programs, including seven passive ones, which is like you go in the children's room and there's a scavenger hunt and you do it yourself and earn a sticker. Um, one virtual, which is our Beanstack program with lots of reading challenges throughout each month and 64 in-person programs. We had over 790 attendees. I'm still waiting for attendance stats from a couple of staff. So until it's close to 800. Um, we had 139 meeting room and tutor and study space reservations in those 21 days. Um, 525 participants used those spaces. Two cancellations, two no-shows. Um, and we use meeting rooms 77 times additionally for either library programs or staffing. So the meeting rooms and, and tutoring rooms are very, very popular. <laughs> um, and they do require some management um, to get people in, in and out of those rooms. Um, what else? I have lots of things that we did. Um, I wrote a report for Mass Office on Visibility. Um, I think Roger Trahan actually brought it to my attention that that money was out there and available from Massachusetts um, Office on Disability. And we spent $22,000 and got a bunch of equipment and some staff training. Um, and now um, we're hoping to get somebody from the vendor to come out and do some training with what we have. So we have two DaVinci Pro all-in-one HD video magnifiers. We've had these for a while, but we're getting around to promoting them and using them. We had some kids using them this week. They are screen magnifiers where you put um, a book or a document under the screen magnifier. And it's, it's, a, it's a computer, so it will scan it, turn it into um, OCR, machine readable text. It'll read to you. Um, you can save those scans as well as enlarge. We have some portable screen magnifier, almost like having a smartphone. So for people who find um, the spine labels too small, too fuzzy, too hard to read, just too far away because the stacks are low, they can take a picture of it uh, and zoom in. It's, it's great for if you don't have a cell phone to do that with. Um, and then we have um, some portable um, screen, digital magnifiers. So we'll be working to promote them and get some more use out of them. Uh, but I did turn in a report to the office uh, that we did have every site and that we have been talking about it as people ask about it. Um, and now we just need a training plan so the public is aware we have it and can start using it. Um, we sent out the March newsletter. I met with legal to discuss policy. Um, most staff have now completed at least half of the librarian's guide to homelessness training, which is all about um, how we can respond to behavioral issues in the library in ways that preserve the dignity and respect of patrons of all ages from all walks of life. And it's been really good training, um, not just for um, serving homeless people in the library, but mental teenagers. Uh, everybody, um, really powerful training. Um, thank you, the board paid for that. Um, and along with that training, we have a whole bunch of other professional development opportunities with Niche Academy. So it's hard to find time to get off the desk and take those webinars, um, but they are really, really great. Um, we recorded 28 low coverage instances where we had to pull somebody from another department to come and cover desks. Things uh, got very dire with multiple staff going out on leave unexpectedly. So um, this month has been focused on posting a vacancy. Um, we had four interviews this week and are checking references to get some emergency temp hires in. Um, the staff are stretched very, very thin and strained. And we actually had to suspend March programming that was led by staff. So there wasn't you know, story time by Sarah, but Apple Tree Arts was still able to come in because they're a vendor who we paid to come in and do a program. Um, and we like we still had our beekeeping program, but we didn't have Call Me Column because that was staff led. So we're hoping to resume in April um, our staff led programming. Um, I talked about budget. Uh, 
building department and DPW were both very responsive over uh, February when I asked for help with uh, you know emergency biohazard cleanup and snow and ice removal. So my gratitude to them, but the custodial department also has a vacancy that as far as I know has not been filled. So that's why we're not getting 35 hours of cleaning a week anymore. It's more 10 to 15. So you are gonna see some dust um, and dirt in the building. Um, volunteers outreach and partnership. We had 16 volunteers who put in 62.5 hours. Carrie, I will say we don't officially have a volunteer policy because the board hasn't uh, written or developed one, but we can certainly you know, talk to Aaron and John and Debbie about getting that in the pipeline. There's a draft, we've just never brought it forward because there've been other pressing things, but. Um, and I'm happy to share any procedures or manuals if that's helpful. Thank, thank you. That was really the, what I was just trying yeah. to say. I searched we the need website one. and couldn't find it anywhere. I talked to Susan Lito about it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I'm glad that you're aware of it and it's a, there's a draft yeah. one. Available. Yeah, it doesn't exist. There's a draft and uh, it, the, the approved one does not exist, but there's a draft and um, it's in the list of things that we need to have and our like long list of, of policies. Um, for outreach, uh, Crescent Manor Book Wagon, Homebound patrons. We still partner with Apple Tree Arts for music and movement and Grafton ukulele musicians. Uh, we partnered with the Historical Society for a history of baseball in Grafton program that was well received. And we're working with Willard House and Clock Museum in April next month. We've been planning that um, with a clock scavenger hunt. So we've got the, the Simon Willard um, tall case clock in the historic reading room. We've got a bunch more different and interesting clocks in our building. So um, I think kids in grades one through six uh, can come in and get a scavenger hunt sheet, track the location of all the clocks in the building, and then submit that as a raffle entry um, to win a, oh, I forget, it's like a nice little mantle clock that's historic antique that's been restored. Uh, and we also have really cool glow in the dark stickers. So we still do story time with Willard House. They have a lot going on. Um, it's a really nice partnership. Um, social media going up, 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 TikTok's been incredibly popular, thanks to Debbie. <laughs> YouTube's stagnating, nobody's watching anything on YouTube anymore. Um, in February, we did a lot of programming, both drop in and come and get something and traditional programming. We had, you know, February vacation week. Um, teen services has been a little bit quieter, but uh, today we had a half day and there were lots of incidents. So just when we thought they were starting to behave, uh, not so much. Um, we circulated 10,965 items, which is I think up from last year, uh, certainly up from the previous year, but maybe not as much as we had pre-pandemic, um, 2,675 digital items. We had 87 museum pass reservations, which is huge um, because of everybody's going to all those museums. We did have 14 no-shows. They had something better to do that day, or maybe there was a inclement weather issue. We registered 81 new borrowers. Um, we are starting to think about our seed library, and we did debut a new program in, in February, Color Me Calm, uh, which is come and listen to some meditative music and color with colored pencils or markers. Um, and that got like 10 people like a, in an after, on an afternoon, so that was exciting. Uh, we answered 360 reference questions, placed 602 holds. And now that the Wi-Fi statistic um, you know, collector is working, yeah, I think I had estimated, oh, we probably have like, I don't know, 100 people a month who jump on the wireless, 1,200 a year. We had um, over 3,400 people hop on wireless. So our total computer use this February was 3,498 computer users, 174 of which were on site. The rest were all people coming in and getting on their Wi-Fi. Um, we're definitely saying that even though there's only four computers for adults and we used to have six, there's no, there's not a line. We're never going up to people and saying your time is up, someone's waiting. So many people now have their own devices. It's much more common for somebody to ask how they can print. And they're coming in with a zip drive or using their laptop to connect to the wireless to do a little bit of printing. We purchased and added or had donations of 637 items in February. We uh, de-accessed, which is when we pull out something that's uh, old, bad information, superseded, damaged, 234 items removed. Um, Cynthia has been doing a lot of work in technical services to clean up records, figure out why common issues occur, set us up with a new vendor for video gaming. 
Um, and we shifted to ordering um, some of our nonfiction from a different vendor because we're getting a better discount. So that's been a lot of work. Oh, we also had a very popular escape room program in February. Uh, Cynthia, who's in, I'm looking at my report, Cynthia, who is in technical services, helped cover that a couple of times. I know Aaron's family went. Um, we probably won't bring it back for April break, but we will over the summer. It was very well received. Lots of little locks. Um, friends, I heard made like 2,500 bucks at their book sale. Well done. <laughs> but I'm hearing there's not interest in summer reading program t-shirts so much. Um, and a reminder that there's still tickets on sale for the egg hunt, which is April 1st. Um, Willard House is doing a program from 12 to 3 that day. So you can come and hunt for your eggs, go to story time, meet the Easter Bunny, and then go get cake for Simon Willard's birthday over at Willard House. Um, and then this our yes, not log and no log. Um, do you have computers? Do you have colored pencils? Do you have big rooms available? And how much are they to rent? No, you can't be in the children's room without a parent to a child under eight. Um, no toddler time today. Friends are no longer taking book donation. Um, somebody responded that we don't have a laminator, but we actually do. It's upstairs in adult services and it's a dollar a page to laminate. Um, we don't have canopy for streaming. Um, we're moving away from service, like pay paying on demand for items. So we had discontinued Hoopla because it's not a sustainable model for libraries because you get charged based on what patrons use. And canopy, unfortunately, uh, is the same way. Um, the patron comments, we had eight com compliments about the building and one complaint, complaints about library closures, compliments about programs, five complaints about programs, one, there's a good and bad side to everything. Um, two complaints about noise, particularly when teens were in the building after school, and also two compliments about teenagers um, and the space that they were using. So, you know, for every good thing, there's a bad thing. So I'll, I'll send out um, this report that I did just finish today. Happy to take questions and let's on back in. Yeah, Aaron. Yeah, um, I, I just want to reiterate on, on um, something that just triggered when you said um, noise complaints. So that community room, um, we really put it through its paces and um, you know, it's, it's in such a really kind of strategic uh, place in the library. Um, that I'm sure Beth, you can speak to this, but the community chorus was in there. And of course, um, if you weren't out in the hallway, then, um, you know, you, you clearly wouldn't be able to hear it. But I think yeah. we had a, a meeting um, about the book sale with some of the, uh, the friends and we were in the friends corner and we were having a quiet conversation like right outside that room and there was no problem. I mean, we could hear, we could hear singing, but it wasn't so, um, so loud, it was disruptive. I don't know um, if it was like that in the children's room. I didn't go over there, but I think that's a good stress <clears throat> test for that room and having large, you know, noisy groups, uh, for lack of a better word. So that was great. I can hear the teens under if they're sitting in the um, the the booths that are at the window that matches up with my office window. That noise filters up after school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I go down um, in yellow. <laughs> Um, any other questions or comments for Beth? Dana? I want to say, I thought I heard her say that there was 81 new, um, new, um, you know, new book. I mean, people join the library, yeah. library cards. That's a lot because I, because I remember I went to Shrewsbury, the Shrewsbury library, and it was roughly a year after, and they told me they were thrilled they were getting like 60. So I think that's pretty darn I think it's really good, Beth. Congratulations and everybody on the staff. That that's phenomenal. It really is. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. How can we how can we keep that momentum, Beth? You, was there something that triggered that many library cards? So yeah, I'm trying to pull up my um, this is my my heiress spreadsheet. So I'm just gonna scroll back a little bit. These gaps are during the pandemic, right? So here's um, FY19. Total new borrowers um, in FY19, which is again, July 1st to, G to June, 600 in the course of a year. Um, for 2019 total, 587 new borrowers. For FY20 total, it jumped. Um, and then pandemic, we did cards online. So it was lower during the pandemic, only 200 a year. Um, for 2021, 600 new borrowers. And again, we, we delete 
um, borrowers who have not been active for four years every year. So we're, we're constantly combing through for, is this card inactive? Maybe the person oh. deceased, maybe they moved and we're, we're calling out what doesn't belong anymore. We still hover between 20, um, 9,600 to 10,000 borrowers annually. Um, so that number is not actually increasing, but FY22, we had added um, 1,150 for the fiscal, uh, that's fiscal year 2022, we added again, so we're up over a thousand. Um, and so far for this fiscal year, which ends in three more months, we're already at 776. So part of it's, I think, new building and people coming from other towns to come and take a look and check it out. What would be interesting would be if we hit say 12,000 total borrowers and that's what I'm not seeing. So while we're giving out more library cards, um, it's possible that more borrowers uh, cards are expiring and they're not renewing them sometimes because they're using online only or maybe they have money to buy their own books or maybe they go to a different library. Huh. Um, but yeah, right now we're at like 90, 9,600 total borrowers um, for Grafton or Grafton residents and then maybe just under 10,000 total for Grafton library cards. It's two different, two different figures that we have. Because if you go get a card in Shrewsbury, you don't have a Grafton card, but you're a Grafton resident with a library card. So we usually track both of those numbers. Uh -huh. So okay. it's increasing as far as um, keeping it high. What I'm finding that brings people in, I'm just gonna stop this screen share. Truly it's, uh, it's programming. So you have a program and people come and then they see something cool you have and they wanna take it home. So even if they just came in like for the softball coach meeting, they might see something that they want and then need to get a card and, and, and take something home. Um, we push library cards heavily in September, but that's not our biggest library card sign up month for whatever reason. Uh, we also have more and more services where you need a library card to get a perk. Like for example, if you need to reserve a museum pass in advance, you have to have a card at home to do that yourself online. Um, and when you come in, we're looking for a library card number so that we can check out the pass to you. If you wanna book a meeting room in advance, you need a library card number to do it yourself online. You can also walk in day of and without a card, give us your information and we'll sign you up. But having that sort of, you know, not to create any barrier to service, but um, you, know, you do need a card to check out things and that does at this time include advanced meeting room reservations. So it's possible also that part of the increase is people who wanna reserve a meeting space. And if they want to do it at home in their pajamas at their convenience, you, you do need a card to do that in advance. Mm -hmm. so. All right, Carrie? Yeah, um, Beth, could you show the, the, the uh, report just one more time? I just had a question sure. uh, in the middle section. It says Upton and it says Common. Could you just explain what that oh, means? Oh, yeah, that's the names of the doors. Hang on one second. I'll oh, pull it back okay. up. Oh, yeah. So there's a, we, have, we don't have a first and a second floor. We have an Upton level and a Common level. So, uh, but why is it called Upton? Because um, it's Upton Street. So this Upton. is the up. This is people coming in the Upton Street door, which is the parking lot entrance, uh, and these okay. are the people coming in the common entrance on the second floor. Okay, I, so that's yeah. one forty, but it's Upton Street. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Thank this you. may be a different way to say it. Before it was just it might have been Upton. I don't know. We, we just called it something else. So it's the South Street door and the the, the common door. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, we've, we've, we apparently we've named it lots of different things, but and then at St. Andrews we just had the one door. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, and we total it. Okay, any other questions for Beth? No. All right. Thank you so much. It's always interesting. <clears throat> I'm sorry to, to hear the numbers. And again, we were open 21 days, That's so all of those much. numbers are over three three weeks of, of being open. Yeah. It's a okay. short month and there's some weeks. Yeah, that's great. Uh, yeah. Oh. Why we're exhausted. <laughs> great. <laughs> February is a short month and we had snow and ice and all that stuff. So all right, great. Okay. And we have a few guests here. Any public input? Uh Roger. Madam Chair, thank you for having me. I will be submitting my nomination papers this week. Actually, I will be having a family member submit them because I, for the first time, have COVID. So <laughs> I survived three and a half years or whatever it was, or three years without COVID, and here I am. Um, so I'll be, it's, it will be exciting to 
serve on uh, the trustee, you know, served with the other trustees. Mm -hmm. uh, it's exciting. I will still be maintaining my membership with the Accessibility Advisory Commission, but after three and a half years, I will be finally stepping down as chair. So that heavy lifting will be behind me. Mm -hmm. And I will just add that I'm a 15 year beekeeper. So this will be fun. Very nice. Yeah, I think it, you're going to bring a unique perspective with the ex, with the accessibility things and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I know yeah. we have Carrie here, who was a past board member and very involved with the friends. So. Yeah, so I'm sorry to hear, Roger, that you had COVID because I was hoping to get your signature. I was actually sick, not with COVID, but I was very sick over two weeks and I am behind on signatures. So if I, like, I need your signature. So I'm going to go to, to Townhouse Tavern Friday night. Um, if you can stop by and sign, if you are a resident of Grafton, a vote, you know, registered voter in Grafton, I need your signature. And, and I will, I will add Carrie that um, I don't know. I, it didn't occur to me until well into the signatures to ask people to write legibly, like people are doing this sort of like, when you go to pick up a script at CVS, the little squiggle, uh -huh. and, and it's illegible. And, and unless it's just one voter in that house and they assume it has to be that person or the multiple voters and, and some voters are uh -huh. legible and then you back into who may not be legible. But mm -hmm. I make sure that okay. you have way beyond that 50 because- Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah every well, year. That's yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. God. Absolutely. But you're right. Like, I know, like, yeah, I like when I do the CVS thing, it's just like a line. So like, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. so I do when I do a real one, I, I try to, to make it good wow. but for, for yeah. that, that tip. Right. All right. Well, that's, you know, great tips for um, anyone who is running for anything now or in the future. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Wonderful. All right. So um, the next meetings, the policy subcommittee meeting is meeting on the 27th, seven o'clock and room 219 at the library. And our next trustee meeting is April 26th, <clears throat> 7 p.m. at um, in community room A and Sounds like Beth is going to look into what's going on with the technology and um, it will get posted, you know, with the agenda. If there's, I don't know, <laughs> any change, I, I, I don't know. I don't want to speak to if it's going to be Zoom access or it'll just be recorded or I don't know, but we will find out, I'm sure, by then. <laughs> okay. All right, um, anything else? All right, so yes. I'll make the motion to adjourn. Yes, that was my next, <laughs> thank you. You read my mind, Aaron. Mm -hmm. uh, second. All right, okay, any discussion? Okay, uh, Karen, aye. Uh, Doug? Doug, aye. Dana? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Marty? Aye. And John. John, aye. All right. Wonderful, everyone. Thank you so much.